Hello everybody, welcome back. And let's just go right into it. <laughs> now you can see all my different games here. We are moving into Night Gen Thoughts 2, which is turn 3, because turn 0 is a thing in this game. And I have not watched these battles yet. Sort of wanted to keep it as a surprise. This will be our... So again, some... Th oh! This is one of the other players who are writing to us, from Atenium. For us, but more like he's bad, am I right? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I'm so excited. One of the other players have sent us a message, and I'll I'll try to send a message back to him. That's kind of cool. I think I want to be pretty role-playing. Uh, we'll have to look at who he is. I think that's the game host, but I'm not sure. And then two of the other nations have declare their profits. They probably wanted to recruit a special leader that they wanted as a prophet, so they've waited a one turn. We can look here. Butterflies, a virtue. A butterfly's virtue ascribed... What? That's a long title. Ascribed worm of the druid of the hawks. Aha. And then... One in tenth random path, first try, the follower of eternal song. Ha. Fair enough. Shall here be now known prophets of Sist both. No burden. Burden. All right, let's look at the battles. This is where the game gets, gets good. I'm so excited. It could fail or we could have in two territories in one game here, or one, one turn. So let's pause it. And yeah, these are our hobbits. So this is kind of cool. Uh, these are the squares in the game. Battles are divided into squares like this. This is Pippin, indeed. Here he is. He's got his own little stat card, and the cool thing about Dominions is that every unit has its own stat card, and everything is simultaneous. So once I click start, they will all start moving towards the enemy. Well, these are holding for two turns, but they're otherwise they move forward. The cool thing about Hobbits is that you'll note we have how many? One, six units in one square. Whereas if we go to the other side of the board, here, there can only be three humans in one square. Uh, and all of the uni these units can attack in adjacent space. The rest will have to move around in order to make a, an attack. Which means that if you are surround an entire square on all ni nine or eight sides, which is possible and to make attacks from, we could have six times eight surrounding you one unit and attacking all at the same time. It's insane. Insane. But every human will, of course, be stronger than the average puppet. This guy has, let's see, strength. That's, if you look at the damage, that's really what the important part. And hit points, so... Protection 5, hit point 10. Dealing 12 damage. And the heavy infantry deal, deals 13. It's actually not that much, much stronger than our... Uh, like, it's 9 hit points and 13 as well, and we have a sling. Interesting. I thought they would be a lot stronger than us, but they are not. They have a priest, and they have a commander here, and they have another commander there, and they have another commander here. Oof. So they have a lot of commanders. We only have the one, and we really hope that Pippin will not be hit by a, a stray arrow. So up in the corner here, you can see Lothar prepares to cast Blessing. That's got to be the priest over here. He's Lothar the priest. Their only sacred unit will be that priest, and I think their blessing, he's blessed now, it doesn't even have an effect yet. It does nothing. And meanwhile, Pippin has cast Earth Might. Alright, so now he is stronger in Earth Magic. It's not reflected here, but that's what Earth Might does, I believe. No, it makes units stronger than Enchantment plus four. Ah! So now they hit a lot harder. Ooh, he buffed a bunch of our units here. Cool. Cool, cool. And he does it again. So he's he's thinking that those are the best. Uh, yeah, 18. Ah, very cool. So he's just buffing units. Very nice. And now we're firing our slings. Oh boy. So you can do different speeds. Uh, since this is the first battle, we'll do it a bit slower. Ooh, hoo hoo hoo. Just to show off all the cool things that can happen in this game. Pippin prepares to cast Animate Skeleton, and he's done exactly that. So we have spawned a skeleton. 
It'll only be here for that combat, but uh, it can move forward and attack, and it's totally an expendable units. unit. Alright. Forward we go on to glory our little hobbits. And once the army meets, they'll start attacking each other in real time and do battle calculations and all the things. And... Oh! Their priest is doing a banishment spell, like a turn undead spell. We have more skeletons coming in. We are losing some, but we are... Oh! These guys are routing. And we are overwhelming them. Good. Forward to glory, my little hobbitses. Yes, kill them. It's got down to five hit points. I want to try to find... One thing that is also cool, this guy has taken some hit point damage. And he has gotten a wound that will carry over between battles. So this is a battle wound, lowers his strength by four. Will be noted here on his strength, and that directly affects his da damage ability in combat. So it's a permanent affliction that will be carried over to next to future battles. Uh, and it says the independent army is surrounded. Before this battle ends, I want to show off another cool thing. If you are a little bit confused about what what went on, and I want to see how well Pippin did, we just go into this screen. And whew, yeah. There's a lot of information. There's basically a, uh, a whole battle log for every unit that is in this combat. So we click on Pippin and we can see exactly what Pippin has done throughout the entire fight. He cast Earthmite, or prepared to cast Earthmite and cast it, so on and so forth. He started doing Animate Skeleton, then he started doing Frighten, and that's probably when the enemy started to run away and then Animate it again. So very cool. If you look at one of our FreeWorld scout here, Penetration of magic resistance, right? Because you, the the priest was trying to banish our undead. Uh, we can look at one of those that, that died. And there's an entire combat lock here. So militia hit Frivaldi's ghoul forest infantry in body with spear for eight seven points of damage. Attack roll nineteen versus defense roll fifteen. Damage rolls twelve. Really detail. Then the. The, yellow, the white ones are him attacking different militias, dealing some damage. Target got a permanent li limb. Target was killed. Very cool. So he did kill a unit before he died. Then he was missed by the heavy infantry. He missed back. Then he was... Then he hit another uh, heavy infantry in the body and killed it. So he killed two units before he died. This one infantry. Very cool. So and so forth. Very nice. So we won this one. We can quit out of the battle. We can click this button here and see more detail of what exactly happened. We lost five Frivaldi School Forest Infantries, but they killed this group of units, killed 24 units. And they deployed a total of 39 units and lost 39 units. When, when independent forces route, they will always all die. So there's nothing really to say about that. We can see that the priest was able to kill one unit with his banishment spells. And the, the heavy infantry killed four. Alright, they killed six, but one of them must have been the uh, one of the units spawned by Pippin then. Alright. So that went fairly well. We only lost five units. Alright, then there is a battle in Kareem. And I think we will win this one, but let's see. This is our prophet here. He's probably this one. Yes. Gundarik the prophet. And our little Werehina infantry is here. I have no idea whether or not they are good. Well, we'll find out. Oh, and they have... Oh, what is, what is this? Heavy cavalry. Yeah. Heavy infantry. Why are they golden? I wonder... Interesting. And they have some archers. Again, our prophet could be killed by a stray arrow here. These heavy cavalries are a problem. They're heavily armored, so the slings will do nothing. Okay, here we go. Uh, 
Gundarik has cast Summon of Courage and Divine Blessing, so our sacred troops are blessed. Let's find one. Here. Morale plus one, Poison Resistance 15, Undying 2 is really not a very good bliss. I'll be honest, but who cares. Let's just run in there and see what happens. Fight on, my little hobbits. Oh, ho oh, ho, here's one. So, oh, he's already down to zero hit points, but he's got undying two, so he can go to two, negative two hit points before dying. But this is one of the avenging guys who was killed, and now he's turned into this rare hyena. So, it has maximum points, more hit points than the uh, standard unit has higher strength, 14 damage here. It has a hypnotize ability. Oh, so it can stun enemies. With the, it doesn't affect blind units, so it's sort of a gaze attack. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't. Even, I didn't even know. Huh. And they retain the bless into, into this. All right. Very cool. Oh. And he got stunned. Perfect. So the very hyenas doing some work here. We're not doing a lot of damage, but we've surrounded them completely and we're just overwhelming them. And now they're running away. Even these guys are running away. Oh, the very hyena. <laughs> Go get him, boy. Haha, <laughs> he's stunned it. Get it. Kill him. One of our units was killed by a stray arrow. Oh, it's not a stray arrow, it's a, an aimed arrow with, launched with the intent of killing our dudes. So it's not that weird. You should say a lucky arrow, because the chances of being hit by a ra just any one arrow is actually pretty low. But once you've got a swarm of arrows, that's when it starts to get dangerous. Okay, and we're just overwhelming them. And the stun doing some work here. Very cool. Yeah, we've lost like one unit. I, I think we lose the where where high unit dude because he's got zero HP now. Uh, so yeah, undying. Yeah, here undying two. When the battle is of is over, any undying troop on negative hit points will die for real. But he's not in negative hit points. He's technically not in negative hit points. I wonder if we'll lose him or not. This is working out really well. Don't let them get away. You get more experience for killing them. So, oh, we hit one of our own troops. Friendly fire! Friendly fire! Yeah, they have real trouble dealing actual damage to armored units. I'm spe speeding it up a bit now. It's unlikely we'll catch him, but it doesn't matter. Oh, we got him. Sweet. All right. So that was in Kareem. We do lose the Avenging Nightblade. All right. We lost three units in total. And we killed everything. Very cool. So we claimed two territories and we found an arena here. 25 gold per turn. Sweet. Our income will have gone up. 62 for this one and 64 for this one. All right. And this one has a bit of unrest. All right. Now, when you capture a territory, you can recruit units in that territory. So now we can start recruiting humans if we want them. Same thing over here. Heavy infantries. Are there? Is there a difference between this guy and the other, uh, the golden ones? That's what I want to know. Cost 10, 11, 9. And this guy in here, heavy infantry, 10, 16, 9. So more resources. What's the difference? Protection... We want to look at these three numbers. Hit points is the same. So protection 12 and then... Attack skill and defense skill 10, 13. And then over here... We get 11, so lower. And then one less defense skill as well. And this is a spear with 13. And this is a bronze sword with 14. So these guys are pretty good. What's the catch? Precision, no, doesn't matter. Strength. Morale. 
Not that one. Oh, okay, these guys are pretty good. And then, of course, the heavy cavalry is pretty damn good. All right. Uh, but look at... Oh, no. Oh, let's go and redo turn from scratch, because that's the thing you can do. Oops. Ah, goddammit. Nineteen thoughts. We didn't change anything, so it's fine. Exit. This is carried over from last turn, this recruitment, so we want to keep it. We want to recruit as many Avenging Night Blades as we can, for sure. Uh, and what do we want here? Buried Father... A frog herd. I don't want to stop recruiting those. We need to more uh, spellcasters and researchers first. We could go for the big one. I think we want either one of these or one of these. The the real thing is if we look at him here, Knullheim, Knullhelm. He got an extra into fire, so he's a fire level 2, that's very nice. He's got 15 research for an upkeep of 84. And Pippin here costs 128. So it's one less research point for a lot less gold, which means that they are the more efficient researcher for us. We'll grab another one of those. And then we still have a lot of resources and money left here. We should use that. So, we cannot get any more of those. We want... Well, basically, I don't know. Do we want to spam the ghouls? Or do we want to spam these guys? The hammer is on that bad. In a swarm, they're good. We should probably... We can get some real archers, which would be nice. Also, a commander. Again, I think this commander over here is probably the better one. 40, 22, 1. 40... 14. How, how is the resources in here? Not that high, so we can't get a lot. But I'll recruit this commander, because he's decent. And that's all the resources for that province. So we don't have to worry about more from there. Alright. We can look at what we see in the Frome province over here. It's got 70 units, and it's mostly mainly forest trolls and lava born. And the army appears to be commanded by Gulgi the troll Scythe Berenders. <laughs> I have no idea what all that means, but... Okay. Only 10 enemy units here. Only 30 in here. Ooh. I'm thinking I could be really greedy here. I could try to grab two provinces again. Because it went really well. And this is low... They can definitely grab that. And then Gundarik, I think you can grab this one. Probably even without any help. Uh, but we could set Kernholm to go and help you. Oh, really, you should... So one other thing that mages can do is they can search for magic sites in here. We could do that later. Oh, I'm so greedy. I want to probably... Oh, it's 103 here. Yeah, we get this information now because our dominion has spread in here. There's also uh, another province type here that is denoted by the terrain. It is a farmland, which means that it has higher income, low resources, and fewer magic sites. But this one we have more intel on, and we can tell that it is pretty weak. So we can definitely grab it. Kind of want to search for magic sites here before moving on. Uh, but should we be greedy? Which is more greedy? Going for magic sites early? That will give us more gems. We are making some gems from the magic sites in here. Yeah, two and four. Uh, and, or we could 
move down here right away and grab that one. You know, we could do that with Kunhelm. He can't bless these units. Our bless isn't super strong anyway, so it doesn't matter a whole lot. Cannot lead undead units. All right. He's got 13. He's, he's a spellcaster himself. And we saw before it was... It said 30 before, I think. Munitions and light infantries. I think it's unlikely that we do it without the help from Pippin. But he could just move down there. We'll search for magic sites later. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that. All right. Now in here, we want to recruit more for sure. We can get a lot. It's mostly the resources, or sorry, the recruitment points that we need. So with that in mind, the Freeville D school infantries aren't that interesting. Just a lot of hammers. I'll mix in some slingers, but that's fine. We still have some gold, a little bit of gold left, not a lot. It's not something we need to spend on anything in here. What we should do, like I showed you in the, I think, the first episode, that we have a defense in here of 25 that gives us this army. The new territories we take will have a defense of zero, but we can spend a little bit of money into getting some defense in here. And for two gold, every time I click this button, well, see, it starts at zero. I click once, it costs one for the level that we are buying. When we click it again, it goes to two, and it costs two. When we click it again, it costs three. The two, first two clicks, it's three gold. And we get us, I don't mean we get six units, one of them are being a commander and such, for just two, three gold here. This is four gold. Oh, no, it's six gold. That's a quite a good amount of units for six gold. And they don't cost any upkeep. It'll be the same in here. That's definitely worth doing. I like at least three. Uh, we might even want to go half. Uh, it doesn't give us any unrest reduction. But our dominion is order. So that'll give us unrest reduction too when it spreads into this territory. Right now it does not have any order, but it will get it. All right. Um, the thing is that Kernhelm here does not really have to move in there. Because these guys can definitely do it on their own. With the 35 and him casting spells. Gundarik could maybe use the support. So Kenham could go to go up here instead and bring these sacred units to him. That makes more sense to me. So we're taking two territories again. I I feel like it's super greedy, but it would be pretty good if it worked. Up here by our scout, we found uh, an army of 40 enemy units, consists of mainly barbarian, barbarians and barbarian chiefs. And barbarians are super strong. You don't want to mess with barbarians unless you are out uh, significantly outnumber them. They are fast and high, hard hitting, and they will absolutely butcher our little hobbits. I think so. We're not messing with them right now. But taking two territories again, that would be pretty damn good. I'm going for it. Just fast expansion with our little swarm units. All right. And the commander in here can go and help by picking up units here and moving them around. So we don't have to use our spellcasters that we recruit every turn. Yeah, I like it. We have 28 gold. We can recruit. I know we don't have any resources here. We can start on one heavy cavalry, but really, it's not worth it. Start on one archer. Nah. It's fine. I think that's it for the turn. So we're still not starting any research, but we have two mages out that can start researching for sites. Got one more coming in. Okay. And the fire mages are quite a good uh, 
battle mage, actually. As you can imagine, fire spells. Right, let's see. Atinium. Let's look at Atinium. Who are you? Pretenders of the world. Uh, for Atinium, Cassandra. So these are the lizard people, and he is dissing Rock the Haspot. <laughs> I have to read it again. Haspot more like he's bad, am I right? Oh my god. <laughs> so how do I don't even know? It says send messages. Send text message, send gold, magic gems, send blood slave, and a magic item. Oh. Send text message. Either everyone or Atinium. <laughs> Forsooth. Totally my f my fishy brother. We hop it says. Uh, sorry, now let's take another angle here. In Hoburg, we much enjoy fishies. You are welcome here anytime. Just welcome anytime. <laughs> implying that we're gonna eat him and his people can I how does this work like so forsooth yeah Especially with chips. You are welcome here anytime. You are welcome anytime. All right. Okay. And ah, uh, what do we say? Shalom. Party in. Freewald next. Uh, is it? Do we use Fridays? I don't know. Friday, whatever. Uh, be there or. Oh, it shouldn't be party, it should be feast. Feast in Freewald next Friday, be there or be square. Square. To every nation. Good. <laughs> oh my god. I I hope they will think it's fun. I think these guys enjoy some <clears throat> Mimi. Um, I'm trying to find a good word for it. Just... Debauchery, it's not the word. Like, hmm. I know the Danish word for him. Fjallery. Tossery. Ah, I'm too tired. This is the end of the episode, and I think I covered everything. I probably did forget something. I would be surprised if not. Ah, we can hire. They want. We can hire mercenaries, but they want 180 gold. We don't have 180 gold. Someone else have already hired Merkorkas green men. They are hired by Haraspa. We are not going to go into that or that shebang right now. This is the end of the episode. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye bye.